cutter mommies travel in packs. Indeed they do. I suppose you know who, the, who I'm talking about, the kind of people I'm talking about. I'm talking about, in particular, well, in particular, the women on, um, on the parenting forums, the mommies on the parenting forums. But also, they, they seem to sometimes congregate on Twitter, um, and sometimes on YouTube as well. I, I, more so on the videos, the vlog, the mommy vlog or parent vlog, parenting vlog videos that have a have an existing following, and of course there'll be lots of mommies, an echo chamber of Cutter mommies in the comments uh, there to defend Cutter mommy, or or defend circumcision in the comments section. Uh, we we can really go to war with them quite well in, on YouTube, um, and I suppose now on Twitter I've been leading some pretty vicious Twitter strikes uh, in, in corners like this. They don't explicitly congregate on Twitter. That's probably the least coherent place where they can congregate. But they, they do sometimes flock together to defend each other, defend circumcision. Also, I, I have to say, possibly Facebook as well. In fact, I imagine, given the way Facebook works, I bet, I bet this is a really a, a place where these cutter mommies tend to congregate. And, and pat each other on the back and, and have one big echo chamber hug box of genital mutilation. Uh, I just, I, I don't have a presence on Facebook, but I feel like it, it's probably really, really bad on there. Just the way it works, the, the way the community works. Um, and Tactivism has a bigger presence there too, and hopefully they're combating that. And you know what I'm talking about when I say it, right? There are these mommies they pretty much invariably at this point they've already circumcised the son so there's already some psychology some sunk cost psychology at play already um but but you can you can tell their attitude they often have sort of a a concern troll sort of attitude you know like oh oh gee well it does lower infections uh and you don't want Jimmy to be made fun of in the locker room. And, uh, you know, nobody should be made to feel bad for decisions they make for their children. It's just a personal choice. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have a feeling the, the mommy forums can be a real echo chamber. I don't know if intactivists penetrate them very much. But anyway, I just wanted to dwell on this for a moment, and people need to realize that these, these cutter mommies, their motivations have nothing to do with the good of your son. If they're congregating around you and saying, oh, yeah, you should probably circumcise. If they're doing that, their motivation has nothing to do with, with your kid's well-being, as is generally the case with circumcision, because it has nothing to do with the well-being of the victim of the genital mutilation. It is always for the benefit of some third party, the psychological benefit of the parents, the psychological benefit and, and monetary benefit of doctors, uh, for the theoretical uh, benefit of future sex partners, for the benefit of geriatric nursing staff in nursing homes that don't want to fucking clean old men. That's, a, that's another excuse. Isn't that wonderful? You know, a boy can keep his foreskin for the first 90 years of his life. Uh, you, you know, we got to generally mutilate him. What about the first 90, you know, years of his life? Or maybe we teach better hygiene practices to the fucking nurses at the nursing homes. Getting to the point, back to the, the point of this video to bring it home. Their motivation has nothing to do with the well-being of, the, of your son. To these people, the mere existence of your gloriously intact, uncircumcised son is a mortal threat to their own existence and their own psychological equilibrium. And I guess that of their kid. It has nothing to do with you. So these people cannot be looked at as benevolent entities when they're coming to you with their, oh, oh, 
concern troll attitude. Oh, maybe you should do that. Yeah, it cuts down on infections. At least it does that. It is not for your benefit. And they travel in packs. It becomes like an echo chamber. And we gotta, we gotta strike. We gotta tear these people apart. They don't respond. They, they just, they just go away. I mean, they don't try putting up a fight. Um, you start talking about human rights. You start talking about the foreskin, the ridged band, and the frenulum being the most sensitive part of their penis that they destroyed. Not being able to masturbate without lube or lotion or massive quantities of spit. You start talking about the fake UTI studies, the fact that there's now studies suggesting circumcision may cause an increase in HIV infection rates. And chlamydia, by the way. That's another one. We need to look into that one. Um, sexual dysfunction in circumcised men and their partners. And their partners. They just, they just fall apart. They go away. They'll, they'll run away or they'll mute you or they'll block you. Um, so let's go rain on their parade. Remember, their goal is not benevolent. Their goal is maintaining their own psychological equilibrium. And we need to call them out. So, fair warning. Cutter mommies travel in packs. Take care. Bye-bye.